In over 50 years as a writer, Richard Hughes has published poetry, plays and novels. To many people, he's one of the finest storytellers writing in English. He's worked slowly, unaffected by changes in critical fashion, producing four novels over the half century since he began publishing. Well, this is the place, and it was deep in leaf mold when I took it, when I first moved in, when I was 17. There was no window here. Yes. Rather, there was just this bare gap of stone. And somebody gave me an old cucumber frame, and I made that window out of it. It's still there now, the same window. And when I dug the leaf mold out, there was a spring under the grate, which ran straight out and through the front door. His first novel, High Wind in Jamaica, was about children. It became a bestseller when it was published in 1929, and it's kept its popularity ever since. His second novel, In Hazard, which was published nine years later, was about a ship caught in a hurricane. The usual thing, of course, if you're in a hurricane, you come in one side with the wind blowing one way, you cross a dead center and out the other side. This hurricane was so powerful, with the wind blowing at 200 miles an hour, that it sucked her along with it. And it also raised the level of the sea, like a, almost like a flattened cone, so that she was able to pass over banks and reefs. It's quite safely that would have wrecked her, where the sea at its a normal level. Well, all that, you see, it, it was very much what was coming to us in the European situation, even to the American salvage ship arriving in the end. Richard Hughes' most recent novels, The Fox in the Attic and The Wooden Shepherdess, are about that storm that was building up in Europe during his own lifetime, the rise of Hitler and the Second World War. They form part of a long work that he's still engaged in writing, The Human Predicament. Although he's travelled in many parts of the world, practically all Richard Hughes' writing has been done in one place, Wales. You mentioned that you wrote part of High Wind in Jamaica in North Wales. When did you first come up here? When I was a boy of 17, I'd come to stay with Robert Graves' parents at Harlech for the, uh, for the summer holidays. And I spent my whole time looking for a cottage and I found a one-room cottage and rented it out of my school pocket money. What was the rent? Four pence a year, two pots of honey and three days' work in the landlord's garden. But <clears throat> after one day's work in the landlord's garden, that was part of the rent was remitted because I did so much damage. And where were you brought up as a boy? I was brought up in Surrey. Which I suppose is... Oh, I first came to Wales at all when I was, for summer holidays, when I was about seven years old, before the First War. And I in, made up my mind then and there that I wanted to live in North Wales. And... Uh, when I went to boarding school, I was homesick for Wales and not for Surrey. The places where you've been doing your writing have generally been places where you could create a complete solitude. Is solitude important to you when you're writing? It's important to me at all times. I love it. Of all the forms that you've written in, poems, plays, radio plays, short stories, and novels. Which do you think is the central one to your work? Well, it, <clears throat> it settled down to being novels. But um, they all come out of the same basket. I mean, I don't agree with Robert Graves that the, the genesis of a poem it's utterly different from the genesis of a bit of prose. I mean, he 
always insisted that I, Claudius, was simply a pot boiler. Well, when you read it, you can see it isn't. It's rather like the difference between a, a, between electric light and a flash of lightning. The li lyric poem comes as it like the flash of lightning. Novel comes much more like steady, low candle power electric light. But they're both electricity. Your first novel, A High Wind in Jamaica, how did you set about writing that? To begin with, I said that very early made up my mind that it was no good trying to write a novel until I was at least 25, because I was changing too fast. And the th something which took the length of time a novel's bound to take couldn't be coherent. The chap had written the last chapter simply wouldn't recognize the chap who'd written the first chapter. And um, then when I was 25, by a sheer chance, I was shown a, a penciled account on about a couple of sheets of an exercise book written by an old lady for a friend of mine and many years ago before uh, describing how she'd been coming back in a, from uh, the West Indies and their ship had been captured by pirates. And the pirates had taken the children into their schooner and um, gone completely sentimental, made a tremendous fuss of them, fed them on crystallized fruit while they ransacked the other ship. And then, after about a couple of hours, it put them back on the other ship and they'd gone on. Well, that made me wonder, if pirates were capable of feeding children on crystallized fruit, um, and there'd been some hitch, so that the, the children got left in the pirate ship, which would have gone under in the end? Would it have been the children or the parrots? Well, that gave me my theme, and but I was uh, handicapped by one or two things, such as, for instance, I'd never been to the West Indies. I'd never lived in the early or middle 19th century. I'd never been a parrot, let alone the fact that I'd never been a little girl. So, uh, Actually, I was the first two difficulties met by the fact that my mother spent most of her childhood in Jamaica. So I had been brought up on a child's eye view of 19th century Jamaica. And um, in many ways, it's easier to describe a place that you've never been to because you have to make it vivid to yourself first by means of words. And that's halfway to make it, making it vivid to the reader. But I did an awful lot of reading. In fact, I spent about a year reading uh, every travel book in 19th century Jamaica that I could get hold of. And uh, I sat in the British Museum and read through, or skimmed through the times for the whole century reading every account of a piracy in it. And most of that, of course, was all condensed into one chapter in the end. The High Wind in Jamaica is often said to be the first modern psychological novel about children. How did you know about children? Well, I had the great advantage of being a bachelor. Because... Um, <clears throat> I think parenthood acts like distorting spectacles. It certainly would have 